This week's episode is sponsored by Helio Gas Detection and Rising Suns, the award-winning brewery in Cork. Hey everyone, this is Letty for the Metal Cell Podcast. I am here with Andrew Johnson from the band Have Mercy. Andrew, how are you doing? Oh, you know, doing great. Can't complain, can't brag, you know? Just Ex- living, living the dream. You're living the rock star dream. Yeah, over here in dreary 26 degree with high winds, Baltimore, because we're right on the water. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so welcome to the podcast as uh, for some of our listeners who may not know Have Mercy are one of my favorite bands of all time they've written three out of the top five records in my life so I am very very happy right now <laughs> nice yeah yeah I'm stoked uh, that's, so, very, that's very nice of you yeah I'm glad I, I'm glad we made it your top three <laughs> or yeah, three no. of the top five yeah <laughs> yeah no I love you guys um, for our listeners who maybe haven't heard of you guys before, do you want to maybe introduce your role in the band? Yeah, so uh, my name's Andrew. I uh, I play guitar and uh, have mercy. Uh, also do some backup vocals uh, live. And then I did some of the uh, the really high-pitched stuff on the first album back when I was a younger boy. You could hit those. <laughs> yeah, but I'm mostly the, uh, the I, I say the, the riff machine and the joke machine. Awesome. So, um, yeah. Two very important ingredients in a band. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so how would you describe your sound? Myself, personally? You, well, or, the band, or the band? The band. Okay. Or, yeah. Oh, the band. Well, I, I always like to say that we're kind of like, um, we're not, we, we got lumped in with pop punk a lot because that was kind of big. And so we, people kind of label us as pop punk. Some people label us as like, you know, the Midwest emo type thing um i just tell people we're just like you know a just a rock and roll band you know we we're just three dudes that love each other like brothers you know we just have this we can't escape each other you know we we broke up and we came back you know um we've always lived within like 10 minutes of each other and uh you know so it's just kind of we're just uh, a rock and roll band from baltimore that started in 2012 and did a bunch of uh diy tours back in the day in a in a crappy van and trailer and then now we're and then uh put out some albums broke up got back together over the pandemic and now we're here put and then when we were doing press for that one we're like we're never touring we're not putting out another album you know all this stuff and Here's here's you know our second album back. <laughs> yeah, I never say never. Exactly. Yeah, that's what they tell wrestlers and actors. <laughs> <laughs> um. So your album, the the Earth pushed back, uh, turned pen this year. Uh, how was the tour mm-hmm. that you did back in November to celebrate the anniversary? Oh, dude, it was awesome. We had uh, our buddies in Valley Heart and uh, a Will Away join us and we hit some of uh, the spots we weren't able to do in the summer. So we were able to do our hometown of Baltimore. We did Buffalo, uh, we did uh, Brooklyn, New York. We did Boston. And we also did Philadelphia, which uh, isn't too far of a drive from us. But, um, and the crowds were amazing. Uh, the response was crazy. You know, it was just like we were there, you know, 10 years ago, except the whole room was singing along instead of like, you know, just five or 10 kids. And um, we had just like, it was so surreal seeing kids, like people like when we first started out who were like 14 or 15 and seeing them now 10 years later, like as full grown adults, you know, and then like, and just being able to see like our friends uh, who we like never see, like our buddy John, who used to work at Top Shelf Records, the label that put that out originally. He, um, he came out to the show and was always, and he, we've always like texted and stuff. And whenever we were in, uh, the Boston area, we would always like stay with him and stuff, but it was cool for him to like come out and stuff. Our buddy Kiate, who's always taken like amazing photos of us. He did, he was at the Philly show and the Brooklyn show. Um, just like all of our boys in Baltimore, because like Baltimore is such a weird place for concerts because I, I like to say that the difference between like the East Coast and the West Coast is the West Coast will, and even like kind of like bigger city to smaller city, because Baltimore only has half a million people in it. So okay. I would say like bigger cities like New York 
or the West Coast, like LA, you know, Portland, stuff like that. If your car break, if your tire gets flat, they'll act like they know how to change the tire <laughs> and be very fake about it. Where like Baltimore, you know, Pittsburgh, Philly, like we all hate each other because we're all very similar. But if you have a tire change, we'll change it, but we'll be insulting you the whole time <laughs> and we won't like it. So I feel like that. So Baltimore is like this crazy because if you go to see a concert, everybody's very respectful and stuff like that. But then like the second that one song that they love hits, like it was just like the whole room would blow up. So it wasn't like so in like Philly, Brooklyn and Boston, uh, the room was just like energetic, like the whole time. It was just like, you know, people bringing their kids that like were born around that time and stuff and even like younger kids. And then like we get to Baltimore and everybody's just like, all right, cool. You know, like <laughs> our buddy Josh stage dove and just like landed on like a bunch of girls. So he said he would personally apologize to each and every one of you if if you reach out uh so but um it was just really cool being able to like hit some of like the places that are a little closer to home yeah and you know and just you know play some rock and roll gigs you know <laughs> and <laughs> oh. now that we perfected everything now that we're older touring as an adult you know so because <laughs> the we had the shows back in august and then we had these ones who were like well prepared this time the first time was just a practice round yeah, it was a practice round that a lot of people t showed up for. <laughs> <laughs> which which songs got I, um, the best reception off the album? Um, uh, it's uh, it's always um, when I sleep. Jeez, uh, uh, I forget all the names of all of our songs. Hold on, let me just pull it up. It's a uh, week at the knees, and uh, cigarettes and old perfume, and let's talk about your hair. Let's talk about your our hair. Yeah, and we're like, we did what we've always closed with Let's Talk About Your Hair. There was one tour where we opened up with it and we closed with Ancient West because we were like, man, this is like, this is like the heaviest song. We can like just jam on it and stuff because we always jam at the end of Let's Talk About Your Hair. Yeah. But like with Ancient West, we're like, we could like trade off solos. There's just so much that we could do. We're like, that tour, everybody went nuts. <laughs> and then immediately left <laughs> like, so so uh so that and then also we always do a cover or so the last tour we did the cover of of 1979 uh yeah. so for the encore we came out we did 1979 uh and then for this one we we did an encore and we did a three song encore which was a uh, teenage dirt bag by Weedus. uh we did uh two years by uh off of a place of our own and then we did um because that's always like a really that song hits you right yeah. here you know and then uh and then we did um a live off the new album wow. which got a which got a great great response and we only screwed it up once <laughs> <laughs> that's not too bad i really wished i'd gone over and attended the shows now yeah, I mean, we had, it was also, like, really insane that, like, because, like, we're just, like, three dudes that play music, you know, like, that's what we always seen ourselves as, and then there's, like, people that were, like, I flew in from Texas, I flew in from California, I flew in from Miami, or, you know, there was even people that flew in from Germany, and it was just, like, insane, and we're just, like, this is nuts, you know, and then, um people just like having us sign like the craziest stuff like you know we always had like posters and stuff so we like had those but like bringing out like old shirts that like i haven't seen in years like there's the, i don't know if you're familiar but um there's this spice that's made in maryland it's called old bay and it's for like seafood uh you know corn yeah. you know it's kind of like an all spice and we did and it's really like a big symbol in maryland and kind of the east coast and we made a shirt with that and logo. And there was a family that came out to one of the shows and literally it was like a five, it was like two parents, three kids. Each one had a shirt from a different tour. That's amazing. Like, and it was just like, it's like just people like busting out their, it was, I felt like I was on antiques roadshow 
but I was just like, wow, <laughs> like each time, you know, instead of being like, this is valued at $700. I'm like, this is valued at, holy crap, I haven't <laughs> seen this in 10 years, you know? Like, <laughs> People busted out the crazy warp tour merch that we printed. Like, you know, it was it was insane. That's sick. That must be an amazing feeling for you as well. Like, whoa, people have stuck with us for so long. That is like people have stuck with us and they like still have this like I don't have half the crap that I had from ten years ago. <laughs> you know? And and like these people have this stuff. And I'm not saying it's weird or anything. I'm just saying like it's just so awesome. That like to see that that's just like it's like a feeling that's so hard to put into words because like it's like you, you don't you don't really experience like you know I don't want to say it's like nostalgia, but it's almost like you see this shirt and you have so many memories from seeing it every night for like 30 to 45 days. So you're just like, oh man, like that was like when we toured with Koji and you know, and I'm remembering like the nights that we like all like where there's like 15 of us like sneaking into a two person hotel room. The day you, you know, did audio tree thing. and like all them come rushing. Yeah, or like the audio tree stuff, you know, and and I'm just like I remember when we were doing when we did that, we were like, Yeah, we're doing this thing called an audio tree. <laughs> and now it's like this huge thing. Like, you know, I always I uh the hard times said this thing where it said half mercy ran so other bands could walk. <laughs> and I was like, Man, that's so true. Like, you know, like all this stuff that we did back in the day that we we're just like, what the f- pardon my French just like what the fuck is this and 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 now it's like commonplace you know like we we did nobody carried records or vinyl and we and top shelf goes hey we're gonna do a small run of vinyl and we were like okay I just my goal when I started playing guitar uh you know years ago um <laughs> they uh they um was just to see my name on a vinyl record and now i've done that you know tw- i have a stack right here of just like because be doing the interview i was just going back through like you know our accomplishments that's what us old men have to do now <laughs> to remember things but it was just so cool like you know do it like that all this stuff that we did that we did is like huge now and to just be like you know when people talk about audio tree, they're like, Hey, have you checked out this band's audio tree? And have you checked out have mercy's audio tree? <laughs> and it's so crazy. Cause we did that audio tree. Like, I think it was like a couple of weeks before the album came or the album was like just about to come out or we were about to record it or something. So that's some good press. That's what <laughs> that's yeah. So like, you know, and then we, and you know, you show up at, I don't know if you know how audio tree works. You show up at like 9 AM and you're in a studio and there's they set you up and stuff so you set up your gear you kind of do your plate your placements they tape it out on the floor and then you go and chill and drink beer for seven hours and then you come back so i was 100 percent not all with i i brian and i are, are sober but uh, back in the day i 100 percent was not with it like i was just like uh, so like when people were like what was the audio tree like i'm like i don't remember it's a blur man. you know I, it literally was a blur, you know, but I just remember opened up this bridge in like Chicago and it just had a bunch of hams in it. And I was just like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> have me a bunch of Christmas hams right now. <laughs> Why not? Uh, talking about like yeah. the physical media and stuff like um, mm-hmm. I unfortunately couldn't get my hands on the vinyls of like, you know, make the best of it, love life in place of our own. But I got the CDs mm-hmm. for him. And I don't yeah. know if you remember, but uh, you you had like little posters in there when you took out like the lyric pamphlets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've got uh, the three of them stuck up on my wall, just like in order. It's amazing. On a that's awesome. Side. Yeah, that's so cool. That's uh, that's so awesome. Yeah, like I said, I wasn't uh, I wasn't on those. I wasn't on the the love life or make the best of it. But, but I was on a place but, of our own. But I was on a place of our own. But I I was always like you know around. You know, we yeah. always you know it was like bribe would like finish recording it, and I was just like, man, that's. That's fucking tight. You know, like, <laughs> that's dope. Like, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope shit, as we say. You know, like, yeah. Um, I know. But yeah, I, I think with the new, with the new record, with a uh, numb, I don't have, fuck, I don't have a copy up here with me. But we did the same thing with the record where you pull oh, it out. Oh, sick! And it's like a pat. It's so it's like a double sleeve. So like it's not like you pull it out and it's just like a white sleeve. So you pull it out if if you can hold on like two seconds. Yeah, of I course. I just run downstairs I'll, and grab I'll it. I pause yeah. the recording. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 
Yeah, so I've always had this record by my side. <laughs> but um, we did the unboxing of one, but this is, I believe this is, we're, we're going to learn, but so you have the record. Looks you know? really nice. Our buddy, our buddy Dan Novak did the artwork. It's super sick. And um, and this is the sleeve on the inside. Ooh. With all the with all the uh, the lyrics and stuff, and then like our our thank yous and stuff, and then when you open it up, yep, and then this one's one of the gold ones. So, That's really nice looking. Yeah, our, I've been making this joke, but I've been saying official gold record. <laughs> Have mercy, you know. So that's really cool. And I'm always one of those weirdos that like. When I was a kid, I know that this is supposed to go in with the record facing up to like protect her from dust. My dad always did this, so I, I always like put them in like sideways like that, <laughs> so I could just like dump the record out. <laughs> but that's, uh, but that's yeah, the way I have always, mine as well. <laughs> yeah, I've always like think that like one of the things with Have Mercy is like the packaging of our records. Like, has always been like so cool. Like, it's we've always, always been had, superb. Had, like, that you said it not me <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's just like i've always just really loved these things and rude was thank you guys thank you rude for you know helping us put that out that's awesome rude did a great job speaking of the new album it's numb it came out mm -hmm. the 8th of december you know how was the recording yeah. process for it so this one was super different so it was kind of similar to our ep that we put out or the mini album that we put out uh with uh our friends at, at zodiac but um this one was we recorded it in, in so me like i said me brian and nick all live like within 10 minutes of each other and we just kind of you know started jamming and all that stuff we all and then brian rec has all the all the good equipment we all have recording <laughs> setups but he has all the, he has the best stuff <laughs> and uh where I see i'm from like his Instagram I just, I, stories it looks amazing his home yeah, studio. And, it's it's awesome it's like going into like a little toy store and then like whenever he's like about to get rid of something i'm like hey buddy hey, <laughs> you know like um, but he um so it was like really cool just like because it was also reminiscent because back when half mercy started we used to just be like you know four friends just like jamming in my mom's basement so it was really similar you know we we're just writing so we'd have like everything plugged in and we would just like jam to like a drum machine and stuff like that and then we and then brian uh programmed the drums to it and then we had our buddy steve uh who uh plays in this band meth rats he's like the world's best drummer he played in this meth really rats, great what a name <laughs> yeah it's like a they're like a hardcore punk band but he played in this he was like when i was growing up he was always in like the fucking cool bands yeah. you know like he was in this band called rosewood that was like this you know, like post hardcore emo band. And then he was in this band called A Perfect Kiss. They're all, all their all their stuff's on Spotify. And that was just like because I only listened to like Tony Hawk soundtrack and like Angry Dude Shredding. Like that was it. Like there was no in between. And then I heard a perfect kiss and it just opened up this world of like emo to like, you know, 12, 13 year old me. And it was just like really cool to like be like hey buddy you want to play on this record and he's just like yeah sure you know and we went back to the studio that we recorded the first record at uh magpie cage owned by jay robbins and our buddy matt uh matt uh who plays in a band uh i'm forgetting their name right now i'm <laughs> such a bad friend um uh, he uh but uh uh, he recorded the drums and we did the drums there and then we did everything else at Brian's house. So it was like really cool because we, we also took our time. This album's like a year, like a year of the process. Like we yeah. started recording it back in like December of last year. Um, so, and um, so it was really cool just to be like, I work from like 10 to four on my way home, just pop into Brian's record for like three to four hours and, you know, write some stuff and then just like drive home and then getting the mixes that day and like listening to it and be like, mm, I don't know about that. And then see you tomorrow. And then just being able to do it like that. It kind of really just a lot of people use the term, like when we went from recording with the first album with Jay in four days, we were just like, this is what recording is. It's just this chaotic 
four day affair. And then we recorded a place of our own with Paul. We had four weeks and we were like, Oh man, this is <laughs> taking our time. You know, like this is now, this is how an album is made like from pre we, and we did pre-production and everything. With this album, we were like, truly like, hey, man, I can't do anything for like three weeks, but like, I'll come in and see you. <laughs> like, but it was, we were always like, you know, there would be days where like I couldn't make it, you know, but it would be like Nick and Brian. Somebody was always tinkering with it at some point. Yeah. And I feel like that's, and instead of us being like, you know, we should write a song like this or we should write a song like that. We were just like, we're just going to fucking write songs that we like to play. Not that, you know, I don't, I don't care if you, I said something earlier about, it was like a joke and a, about something else, but it kind of relates to this where I was just like, I don't care if you don't like it because I do like, you know, and that's kind of how I look at it is I was just like, I don't, give a shit if it bombs because it's super fucking fun to play it's from the heart you know, like, like exactly you know it was just like it's kind of like you know it's not that like people have been shitting on it or anything it's actually the opposite people have been loving it it's kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird not having to just not having to like defend it in every interview <laughs> but um but um it was just like really cool just being able to like take our own pace and just like write stuff that we not even that we wanted to hear just like stuff that we wanted to play where I was just like, man, I just want to do a really fucking cool guitar solo. And they're just like, all right. And I worked at a piano store uh, before we closed uh, last month, but um, for like 20 years. So like I would always just like have little cool piano riffs written and that and it was just cool like being able to see something that went from like a voice memo to like a full to like here it is on physical it went from this phone to this final record <laughs> like you know it went from digital to digital to analog how it started Back versus how it's going <laughs> exactly yeah i i should do that meme like i yes. should do that like I'm gonna do. I'm the one that makes all the memes for us, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> tag me, tag me. <laughs> I will absolutely. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that was that would be great. Yeah. Um, sorry if I'm just rambling. It's no, just kind of, uh, it's the, all good. You're very no, happy. I like it. <laughs> thank you. It's very opposite of most like metal dudes that are just like, I hate my wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, um, so I how... saw this meme where it was like, I saw. Sorry, just just yeah. side day. Saw this okay. other meme the other day where it was like, it was like uh. It was like, uh, not it's just because I listen to Pantera, it doesn't mean I'm a felon. I am a felon, by the way. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so like, <laughs> I love those classic memes, yeah. they're great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so how quickly did songs, um, materialize after you released and recorded like the mini album last year, your self titled? So that one we actually re recorded three times. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> we had there's like, there's like literally like the original version. Taylor's version and then like the director's cut like you know it's like <laughs> a Zack like, Schneider it's, cut it's, exactly like there's one because we kept getting like it was the first time we recorded ourselves and we were in and that one I loved even more because Brian lived in an apartment below me so literally he would just be like hey you want to jam and I'd be like cool and I'd grab my guitar and I'd walk down a flight of stairs and I was oh. like literally we well, like Nick. right there. Now I gotta get. Now I gotta get in my car and drive ten minutes down the road. <laughs> we had Nick there for a second, but he's gone. Oh no, Nick! <laughs> oh, he just texted me. What did he say? Oh, he said shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't see Nick. He was there for a second. We switch to gallery view now. Mm. <sighs> Yeah. He'll make it in. This is time. great. This is great radio. <laughs> <laughs> this will be visual yeah. as well. This will go on YouTube. It's, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So everybody's going to see like my great collection of junk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like, but uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, what were you we talking about before? Nick? Uh, oh, uh, walking down the stairs. Yeah. Yes. So that one we recorded and we're always like one of those bands that's like does stuff like up until like the last minute like the numb music video we needed to have that ready for the date of the release of the record we recorded it fucking like two weeks ago <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so nick is connecting to audio we've got another band member 
Yeah. Can you hear oh, us, we don't Nick? Got... Nick, you there, buddy? I think so. <laughs> there hey! You go. hey! Can we see yeah. you, Nick? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, but um, recording the last, like, we're always one of those bands that, like, does everything up until, like, the, it's not that we're holding off. It's that, like, we almost have, like, like kind of like buyer's remorse kind of where we're just like yeah. we don't we we figure everything out and then we're just like and then like the last second we're just like let's do it like and we've always like and it's so great like finally like finding like a group of people that will put up with that <laughs> like uh our buddy rick that did the videos for alive and uh numb and uh Oh, uh, now I'm hearing feedback, I think, from Nick. But, uh, <laughs> and then we, uh, and, like, also, like, our our buddy Zach that, like, is, uh, books us now. Like, we're just like, hey, man. Hey, there hey, he is. Hey. There hey, we there go. we go. There we go. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Um, welcome to um, the interview. Do you want to introduce yourself on your role in the band? <laughs> I'm Nick, and uh, I play bass. Oh, very good. <laughs> and Nick's also the uh he's the, the business smarts of the band. He's the one that's oh, like, hey, good. we should we should do an in ear system. And I'm just like, sure. <laughs> 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 so when you were saying about buyer's remorse, um, did you ever feel that when you guys got back together or like, you know, was you in a time where you're like hundred percent we want to do this? No, like, so, and not necessarily, like, buyer's remorse is like that. It's just kind of, like, that's why we always wait until the last second to do it. Is because we're just kind of, like, we want to make sure that what we put out is the best product. So that's why I was saying with the mini album, we've re-recorded it three times because we just kept getting better stuff. And then even with this album, there was, like, parts where, like, I... Nick, do you remember, was it the middle or was it uh, Friday that, like, the where... We were like, that solo isn't working. So I just like went in there with Brian and re like redid a solo. What? It was Friday. Yeah. Like there was like parts where like we were about to submit the album and we're just like, man, this solo kind of fucking sucks. So, <laughs> and that's what's cool about doing it ourselves is we're able to do that. We're able to like wait until the last second. <laughs> yeah. But um, getting back together, it was just kind of like, I know when when you guys did the the farewell tour i couldn't get off oh, i just like my personal commitments i just couldn't yeah. do it but we were going to do the the baltimore show and then it got canceled and then brian just like wrote a riff and he was texted it to us and was like hey i wrote this thing it's not really like my thing but it's like sounds could be a have mercy thing and then here we are. All and guns blazing. <laughs> we haven't we haven't yelled at each other once, and I'm not being <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic at all. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Like, it's just so it's so weird. Like Nick, you can probably agree with this because we're the yeah. we're, we're the same age. We're at that age where it's just like I don't have the fucking energy to argue with somebody or yell at somebody. So and also we're just like if I have a problem, I'm just gonna be like like. With that solo, they were like, I really loved it. And they were like, hey, man, that solo kind of, you know, it's a little weak. And I was just like, all right, you know, <laughs> you know, we're just cool having this, like, open, honest relationship again. That's always the healthiest. If you got, like, open lines of communication, you guys are all good. Sure. Yeah. Um, if you yeah. could collaborate with any musician that you're alive, who would it be? And you can both give an answer. Ooh. Oh, man. That's great because I had like like seventy of them just like flew into my head. <laughs> you can even form a super group. Uh, I mean, I I would go I would go older because I because I'm just like I listen to a lot of older stuff. I would definitely say Rory Gallagher. Ooh, good uh, pick. Uh, or or the Doobie Brothers, specifically Skunk Baxter. He's an awesome guitar player. That's a really interesting combination because, you know, Rory Gallagher, he's Irish. <laughs> I'm Irish, you know, so it's great. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, or uh, Irish jeans. But, uh, uh, what, what part yeah. of Ireland is your family from? 
I have no idea. My grandfather fl fled. Uh, my great grandfather fled once my dad or my grandfather was born in like nineteen, like nineteen, and uh... that's. I'm pretty sure they they were Catholic, so whatever part of Ireland that is. <laughs> that's um most of it far uh, the north. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much, yeah. The so, one, uh, and then uh, and then my dad's family. They're from they're from Germany and came over in like the twenties as well. So they just found their way to America. <laughs> exactly. They were just like, here we go. Nick, your your group. Sorry. Let's talk about 23 and me a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um this podcast is brought to you by 23 and me. That's I wish. <laughs> Nick, you're not yeah, gonna go with it. I I definitely thought you would say newfound glory off the bat because like you love no. I feel like <laughs> The order I get, the less I want to correlate with Newfound Glory. But I, I do love Newfound Glory. <laughs> they're just classic. Like, you, even though you want to outgrow them, you never classic. can. They were like my, they've were been my favorite band forever. You know, we'll go with Newfound Glory. Newfound Glory. Or, 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 Nick, I want to show you something. I've had the same profile picture in my phone of you, and I'm pretty sure it was taken from Facebook. When like you could import like a whole thing, and it's you, in like I don't know how to blow this up because I also don't want to get rid of it. But it's you with the uh, with the Wonder Years windbreaker. Oh, uh, the, the windbreaker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was gonna say, you know, the Wonder Years as well. That's pretty. We sick. did do something with them, and it never came out. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we did. I think we did plastic covered furniture or something on the back of their bus and then and then hopeless was like no nah, we're good <laughs> <laughs> we were like it, okay <laughs> you get like a release on that at least a release clause or something i have no idea how we do that <laughs> <laughs> um, not the legal guy oh um do you have any favorite album releases of 2023 so far or any that you're looking forward to next year or yes because I never listened to new music, so I was like super stoked to realize that this album I've been pumping was a 2023 release. I believe it's USA by the uh, by this guy called Petey, and he's like he's uh, a tick he's always on TikTok. He's a long haired guy that's like, hey bud, what's going on? And it's like another and it's him playing like another character, and there's like another character like I'm. You would definitely know him if you saw him, but yeah, uh, he did. He did this album. Uh, yeah, it's called USA, and the single is called "I'll Wait," just like our song. <laughs> Your comeback song. That was the first song that I think yeah, you released. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a cover of ours. I wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> you came out first. Yes. Uh, Nick, Nick what about you? you? Me, I'm the worst one to ask these kinds of questions. <laughs> um, I don't even know what came out in 2023. Oh, Mulligan's album came out, Heart Attack Man's, they're kind of all kind of circle pop punk. Maybe what did the is that? Oh, you're not gonna do Blink 182? No, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's also on my top, that's also on my top 10. I will the few, I yo, I, I fucking still defend pop punk, motherfucker. You know, I never once bought a shirt with an AK-47 on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going through my, my saved albums on Spotify to see like, just what else release came out this year. Yeah. I want to say their new Movements album came out this year, and that's pretty solid. That's probably up there for me. Uh, uh, I think that... Oh, this one came out too. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go for it. I was gonna say Greatest Hates Volume Three by Liquid Death. Have you guys? Did you guys listen to that? I only know the drink, Liquid Death. Okay, so they put out. <laughs> so they put out. They put out these these compilation albums called Greatest Hates. Oh, okay. H a t e s, and it's people hating on them. <laughs> and what they do is they take those songs, they take them, and they turn them into like legit songs. Well, Greatest Hates is like a 90s themed one and it has like Mark McGrath and Audit and Tony Hawk and stuff and there's this one the single off of it is rather cut my own dick off <laughs> with Liquid Death and Mark McGrath and it's great it's awesome 
I'll definitely have to check that compilation out. And I'm not, I'm not jo joking either. Like it's a legit, like each song's like a minute and 30 seconds long. And you're just like, like groove into it. You're just like, this is a bop, dude. Awesome. Um, here's our last uh, question. Uh, Nick, I'm sorry that you missed out on some of the interview. It's fine. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for anyone wanting to start a band in 2023? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> give us old guys a chance no i'm just kidding um that's a nick question nick's always good with the with like the advice for the youngsters uh i mean do it right i mean do what do, i mean do what you love and like just work on you know just i feel like don't listen to anybody do what makes you happy and, and just keep working on it right i mean that's like the biggest thing, if you just listen to what everyone says, you're going to get your hopes up and you're going to overthink everything, you know, just play music to play music, you know, like I wouldn't set any crazy goals. or remember, expectations. That's kind of like, back, you know, remember back in the day when like every local band lasted like two months because they were like, if we don't get signed to rise records in two months, then we're, you know, useless. And like, <laughs> yeah. We're Everyone one of the few it. local local bands that are still around <laughs> from when we were like doing it. Like, you know, it's just I if to piggyback off of that, also like just do don't fucking like there there's this there's this like skate show on Nickelodeon when I was a kid with Matthew Lillard, and he said this one line that has stuck with me since I was a little kid. It said, innovate, don't emulate. And essentially, like, it's like, don't try and be, like, the next Have Mercy. Don't try and be the next, you know, Jason Aldean. Yeah. Like, you know, take that stuff and put a spin on it, you know? I feel like the reason that our songs are so, you know, in innovative or distinguish it, distinguish, I would say distinguishable from, like, other songs is that, like, we're not scared to be, like, you know, let's do this weird fucking thing, you know, Andrew, take it away, you know, <laughs> like do it like, you know, build, we constantly build on it. There was a period there where we just kind of settled with like, okay, I guess like this is where you cap out at musicianship. And now we're all just like, you know, never stop learning, you know, listen to shit you wouldn't listen to. Like I, before the pandemic, I barely listened to country music. Now I'm like, you can't get me away from that old like national <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> You know, yeah. and then like also, also a lot of like that like seventies like adult oriented rock like yacht rock type stuff like that's where a lot of my guitar stuff on this new album came from. It was like that, and also like listening back to our first album and being like, man, I I remember when I used to be able to tap on the guitar. Let me see if I can still do it. <laughs> like um, so, uh, but I would also say if I can, yeah, of course, for for people starting a band, you don't need an amp. You don't you don't need a van and trailer, you know, just get get some, you know, invest like five hundred dollars into like an in ear system. Get some, you know, modelers and you know, just start playing. Also you know, learn how to record. It's the, the that's the most expensive thing. <laughs> get a scarlet focus right and you'll be flying it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And sorry, sorry, it's kind of, you know, me being like, wait, I gotta run downstairs. So, sorry. <laughs> no problem. And Numb is out now. Oh. Yeah. 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 Don't pick, don't forget to pick up Numb.